My name is Loretta Hayes, uh, and I am from Hayes Sewing Machine Company in Wilmington, Delaware. And welcome back to our creative videos. Today we're going to do something uh, that will enable you to get rid of some of your stash. So scrap quilting has become a really big thing. Um, and what's wonderful about this technique is you can really use any size strip and still end up with a beautiful block at the end. So the product that we're going to highlight today is uh, done by Gypsy Quilter and it is called Scrap Tape. And so Scrap Tape comes in two sizes. It comes in a 13 inch roll uh, and there are 10 yards on a roll so you can do like a whole quilt plus some. And then they also make it in a 5 inch size. So if you want to do, say, a scrappy border to go with a pattern that you had used, you know, regular fabric cuts for. So both are uh, really cool. Um, what is fabulous about these is How that... How much is on the five oh, yard? I'm so sorry. Five inch there wide, I should say. 25 yards. 25 yards. Thank you. Um, so what's fabulous about these is they're lightweight. So when we do string quilting or scrap quilting, uh, we're not adding any bulk to our fabric. And then once you have washed the quilt, they dissolve away completely. So this is how it looks as it comes off the bolt. And one of the things that I find with the directions is it says, only iron on the fabric side, don't iron on the, the, this side and whatnot. But it's and a bit so wangly. I, I <laughs> took it off the bolt and I'm like, yeah, okay, but how, how do I get this flat without ironing it? And so I just did the hypothesis of, you know, before I get onto camera, let me check this out. <laughs> and so what I did is I went over and I pressed it. And honestly, there was no problem. It wasn't sticking to my iron. Um, I didn't have to do a special setting. I just kept it on the cotton setting and it pressed out perfectly flat. So what we're going to do with this today is we're going to create a string block. And so we're going to start out by cutting. It's 13 inches uh, in width. So I am going to cut a 13 inch block. Now we are going to trim this block up, so please don't worry about like squaring it perfectly. We're just going to get kind of the approximate size of what we want to work with. Now if you've seen spring, uh, string quilting, uh, you, if you go onto Pinterest or you just Google string quilting, you will find lots and lots of things. But a lot of them start out with a single strip of fabric that is the same color. So while I'm going to use all kinds of different colors when it comes to my scraps, I want something to create structure for this quilt. And so what I've done is I've cut a white on white uh, print uh, and that is going to be the backbone of my, of my quilt. And so I cut a two inch strip. Honestly, it doesn't matter what size strip you do, uh, but you know, keep it say between one and a half and three. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay it out and go over from corner to corner. We want to, when you're working with this, we want to have the pretty side, the right side of the fabric facing up. And so if you've ever had the issue with um, white on white prints, uh, figuring out which side is which. Uh, the simple solution to that is to do what they refer to as the skin test. So what you do is you put your hand under there and it becomes very obvious which is the right side and which oh. is the wrong side. Fancy. So, yeah, fancy is right. Fancy. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to line this up and I'm just basically lining it up so that I'm halfway on either side of the corner. Now we're going to come in and we're going to do our strips. So oftentimes I have fabrics left over from a quilt. You know, you have an eighth of a yard, you have a quarter of a yard, that kind of thing. You've got leftover fat quarters from a fat quarter um, uh, project. 
And so what I'm going to do is cut those into strips. And what we're looking for is not to have gigantic strips and not to have really, really skinny strips. Would you like to get it done at some point? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it would, that would be actually really cool if you did really skinny strips. But yes, you, it would be a little bit lengthening to, to the project. <laughs> All right. So we're going to cut some strips. And I'm going to do a little variation. Uh, you don't have to do variation. You could cut like all your strips two, two inches. Um, what I did for mine is I took and did a two inch strip, a one and a half inch strip, and a two and a half inch strip. So I thought that that gave me enough variation working with that. And one of the fun things about this project is, you know, if you're a beginner, um, or you have, you know, some issues with your hands, you know, maybe arthritis or whatnot, and you're working on those project squares like, oh, I gotta cut new strips because I, um, you know, my ruler slipped a little bit or that kind of thing. On this project, it totally doesn't make any difference because we're gonna have the foundation, we're gonna sew all those strips on, and then we're gonna trim it all up. So if it's off an eighth of an inch here or there, if it's off a quarter of an inch, it is not gonna make a difference. All right, so we now have our fabrics. And we're going to start out, I'm just going to randomly pick a color. And if random is not an easy <laughs> thing for you, <laughs> my suggestion is to throw all of your strips in a bag and just pick out whatever you have uh, in your hand is what you're going to use. Uh, the only exception to that is if you happen to pick it the same fabric uh, two times. So what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to lay our strip down facing our white strip. So we are right sides together. The white strip, the print is facing up. The, the strip I'm adding is the right sides facing down. So right sides together, like a regular seam. Um, what I've got here are batiks, which is always really fun because if you do batiks, you have a right side and then you have a second right side. <laughs> so you can never be wrong. So we're gonna do a quarter inch seam and we're simply gonna come in. I'm using my quarter inch foot, which is my 97, and we're just gonna take off and stitch down. So I'm running the two edges of the strips against my quarter inch foot and I've got my scrap tape underneath. Another nice thing about side benefit of this is if you have a machine that may be a little bit older and it wants to like eat your strips sometimes the scrap tape oh man it stabilizes everything so you don't have any issues at all all right we come to the end we're going to cut our thread we're going to take it out and we're going to do a little bit of heavy duty finger pressing so nothing more than that then we're going to go ahead and we're going to reach in and we're going to pick something else. So I'm going to pick something that is skinny and a different color than what I've got going on here. So we'll go ahead and we'll line that up. And then off we go again. Now in the directions that come with the scrap tape, uh, it tells you that you want to do strips that are at least 14 inches long. And I think when they're thinking that, they're thinking that you're strip piecing going with the, the sides of our square. But if you are doing it on the diagonal like I'm doing, then we need a little extra length. So if you're cutting for your, um, say like a fat quarter, so go ahead and cut, you know, like the 18 inch length, mm -hmm. and that's gonna give us enough to work with. So once again, we're gonna go ahead and push that out. Let's pick something else. Maybe go with a two and a half inch strip. Let's pop a big bright red one on here. And obviously you need less length as you are going towards the corner. Correct. So you can so if you have get strange little <laughs> yeah, and you can get extra strips. Like the leftover here is going to work on a corner. 
So you can really use up the track. So we'll flip that over, just give that a little clip. Let's say we come in and pick out a blue one. And you'll see I'm just lining up. Uh, I'm basically, if you're uncertain, flip Your it over and way. make sure, oh, sorry. <laughs> um, make sure that it's gonna cover the scrap tape. So all I do is kind of line up so that I have about an inch from the scrap tape huh. to the end of the strip. It gives me, it's, it's generous, so I don't have to be at all concerned that I'm not gonna cover it. And that's really what this is all about. We wanna cover that scrap tape piece of um, stabilizer. So we'll press that and how about we pick out a big one so we can cover this corner all at once. Flip that, we have got one side done. Cool. All right, now that we've got that side done, all we're gonna do is we're gonna flip it around and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. So we'll grab a strip. That first strip, that 18 inch from my fat quarter, um, just covers it. So we wanna have, if you're going on the diagonal, you need to have at least some longer strips to cover that diagonal measurement. And remember, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to use the 13 inches. Um, I just thought it was convenient. Uh, but you could cut this into whatever size you'd like. You know, if you wanted to do, six inch blocks. What I would do is I would cut the um, scrap tape and I would cut it into seven inch blocks so that we have a little left over to, to trim up at the end. So press a little bit, grab another one. We haven't used yellow in a while, have we? Let's use yellow. And we have that last little bit, and so... We're not going to use that because then I'd have to do two strips. <laughs> Decisional paralysis. Yep, huh? exactly. All right. So we now have our block covered. So now we're going to head over to the ironing board and we're going to take a little bit of Mary Ellen's best press and we're going to 
spray the block just to give it a little bit of body. And then we're going to take it and we're going to give it a hard press. Okie doke. So back over to the rotary mat we go. And the advantage of doing this with the 13 inch square is that almost all quilters have got in their arsenal a 12 and a half inch square up ruler. So what we can do is we can just land that square right on the top and trim off our four sides. So we're going to come in on the side here. I like to trim two sides at a time. So I'll trim this one and this one, and then I will flip the block, line up the ruler again. So on my nice clean cut edges, I'll line up this edge and this edge, and then I'll come in and I will trim out the edges. Now, what you'll see, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, is I had about a quarter of an inch of the, the scrap tape on each side. Mm -hmm. So you've got 12 and a half inches, right? Okay, so you're gonna trim out about a quarter of an inch uh, around each side. And ta-da, you have made your block. That's beautiful. And quick. And quick, yes, very quick to do. And you can use things you already have. So we have like a little thing that we do in, here in the store. And so you can see how basically this is it, but you can see on like putting the blocks together, how placing that white strip in the center allows you to get some structure to your uh, scrap quilt. So it doesn't matter what color that strip is. You could do that bright red, you could do it black, you could do whatever. Um, but having one color that's going to stay consistent is going to give you that structure. Cool. All right. So that are, that's our doing blocks. So what about if we want to come and do uh, a border? So this border here was done exactly the same way as we just did the blocks. The only difference is that I used the five inch wide scrap tape. So it was already cut. And so I started, I just randomly started. I put a right side facing up. I think it was the blue one that I did. And then I started stitching and flipping until I continue to the end of the borders. So that is super simple and it's basically the same as doing the block. But you can do so much more with the scrap tape. So what about a border like this that is kind of randomly pieced that you've got some movement to it with the angles? So let's show you how to do this because this is just as simple as doing it straight. So if you were going to do a wonky border. <laughs> that's a technical term. Yeah, that's a technical term. All we're going to do differently is we're going to place the strips not edge to edge, but we're going to create an angle. So I'm going to take my blue and I'm just going to create the angle here. And so I'm going to stitch and when I'm doing the seam, I'm going to run the quarter inch foot on the blue and not on the yellow. So we'll come here, we'll cut our thread, we'll trim our uh, strip. But what I would like to do is see if I could get rid of this extra fabric. Remember that scrap tape is going to go away anyway because that'll wash away but we want to get that extra bulk of the fabric. And so easy peasy, we come in and do that. So let's say we pick, say this one here. And so now we're going to come in and I could continue that same angle. I kind of like arcing them back and forth. So I went towards the left uh, for the first one 
and now I'm going to come in and come towards the right. And don't overly worry about your angle. So long as your fabric is getting covered and the scrap tape is getting covered, it's going to look beautiful. And so we come in, we do a little trim up, we get rid of the blue. And then we'll finger press and we get our next arc going cool. along that. All right, so let's do just a quick press of that and we'll trim it up so you can see what the final look is going to be. All right, back to the rotary mat. And so this time I'm going to do the trimming with the 6 by 24 ruler so I can do a longer length. And so I'm just going to come in and I'm going to line up. And I'm basically this time trimming to the edge of our um, scrap tape. So we'll come in like that. And then we'll move her over and we'll line up on the five inch strip, five inch line there. And we will come in. And to da, we have kind of a wedged wonky ruler, uh, border. So super, super cool. Now we could do that same thing on a block. So you could make a wonky block. So lots and lots of possibilities for that. Um, remember that once it's done, it's going to wash out. So you don't have to wash the pieces. Like I don't have to take my border and wash that out. I can construct the entire quilt, which means that any edges that are on the bias are all stabilized when I'm seaming it together. And then what will happen is when I wash the entire quilt the first time, bye-bye, it goes away. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, it's a fun, fun project. Kind of use those um, New Year's resolution to get rid of some of our stash. So we'll see you next time.